just to be comp okay now you are recording okay so i was saying that uh, all the information is uh, is in the discord channel so you can go there to have a look uh, what is necessary for for playing with the images and the data that we are going to do here so we assume that you have already installed GNU Astro, for example, using Conda with the instruction that we, we gave there. But yes, in case you didn't do that, um, yeah, you, you can download the GNU Astro and all of the dependencies uh, with Conda. And then now we assume that, that uh, you have already done this. And now let's go to the, to the action. So here, I have, a, I have a directory in which I have already downloaded all of the images that we are going to use. During the vast majority of the, of the tutorial, we are going to use just one single image. This one, for example, it doesn't matter which one of them, but uh, just one single image. And then at the end, we will start with the more complicated things in will, I will show how to use, for example, different images for obtaining color images. Okay, so let's start uh, step by step. Once you have installed uh, GNU Astro, you can use all of the programs uh, that correspond to the GNU Astro collection of programs with uh, with this uh, in this way. So you, you just have to type in the command line AST, and then you will see all of the programs that belong to GNU Astro. All of them starts with the with the letter AST. So you have here different programs with different purposes the only one that not that is not part of the new astro is this one is astrometry engine that corresponds to us to the astrometry.net uh, software for obtaining astro uh, the astrometry of the images but the good news is that the right now we are working really hard in order to include all of the necessary libraries and programs in order to make the astrometric uh, to obtain the astrometric solution of uh, of the raw images of astronomical raw images just using GNU Astro from from scratch so we hope to so we hope to have everything ready in a couple of months and now we'll we will start the review reviewing the the programs of GNU Astro. So the first one that we are going to use is AST Fits. This is one po program that we use a lot because its main purpose is to check uh, the metadata of the of the images, the headers and manipulate that metadata. So the way you have to 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 use this program is just to type in the name of the program on the command line and now the, the name of the image that you want to, to check. So for example, the image in this image in this filter. And the first thing that you will see is that it prints on the command line, the name of the program, the version of GNU Astro. In this case, we are using the, lat, the latest one, the so 0.16. And then it gives to you all of the information related with this, uh, with this file, okay? So in this case, it says to you that you have uh, four different extensions. The first one is just uh, information. It, it contains uh, no data. And then the next, the next one uh, correspond to the two images. So they are of a type of float 32 images with this uh, dimension. Okay? So now if you would like to have a look at the inside of, uh, for example, the first extension, you just have to type here dash dash hdu equal to one, and then you will obtain the header of this first extension, okay? So this is really simple. Then the way you have to specify this, you can, you can let the, here one white space, it will give exactly the same or with shorter options. So for example, H1 or H white space and one. So they are the different ways we have to specify the arguments of, uh, uh, of the GNU Astro programs. So let's continue little by little. So one of the things that we, another very interesting thing is that uh, is the option, for example, dash dash pixel scale and as you can see here, this is going to give to you some information related with the world coordinate system. Okay, so for example, the size of, uh, of the pixel along the two different dimensions in degrees or in arc second per pixel, which is more common in astronomy. And then also another option that uh, 
another interesting option that you can use is the sky coverage. Okay, so if you type here sky coverage, this command line, then it gives to you all of the information about what is the region of the sky that is covering this, uh, this image. Okay, so all of the different options that are available for each program of Genoastro can be seen with the option dash dash help. So by doing this, you will see all of the different options that you have uh, that, that you can use with this particular program. Okay. Okay, let's continue. Let's go. Um, now we are going to manipulate some of the keywords that are inside of the of the of the extension number one. So for, for example, let, let's have a look at the extension number one again. And now we are going to pipe this into prep just to have a look at which lines start with the keywords PC. Okay, so you will see that here we have four different uh, lines. And now consider, for example, that we would like to remove these two different keywords because the numbers that we have here are very small. Or for any reason, you just want to remove these two different lines. So the way you have to do that is just uh, specifying here dash dash delete, and then the keyword PC one, so one, two, and dash dash delete, PC two, one. Okay, and if you have a look again at the image, you will see that how oh, they have been removed. So this is very powerful. And you can see that just directly from the command line, we can manipulate and also obtain really useful metadata from, from our images. So now let's have a look at the image the, uh, itself that we are going to use along the tutorial. To do that, we are going to use DS9, this program for uh, visualizing the astronomical images. So this image again, just to have a good feeling of what we are going to use uh, along this tutorial, okay? Just to see the object, the astronomical objects in this image, let me change the scale, okay? And here you can see that um, that this image corresponds to the Hubble ultra deep field, and in this particular case, these images was uh, were reduced by Alejandro Borlaf by the time he was a PhD student uh, at the Instituto de Astrofísica de Canarias. And the main goal of this work was to reduce completely from scratch all of these images. Uh, to preserve the low surface brightness of structures around the galaxies. So he used uh, many different programs from the Nuestro in order to model the sky appropriately and then preserve that kind of very low surface brightness of structures. And as you can see here, if I do again AST fit uh, dash one, you can see that but uh, that time Alejandro Borlaf was using GNU Astro 0.7, and now we are using 0.16. So since then, we have improved a lot GNU Astro, all of the GNU Astro programs and libraries, and it is much uh, more mature, and it, it can do very powerful things as uh, we are going to see. So let's continue with the next program I want to show here. It consists in the AST prop program, and the main goal for this program is to make uh, um, cuts of images, so just to select a different region of, uh, of one image. So for example, if we specify here again an input image, which is going to be exactly the same, then we can give uh, some coordinates and some width in order to have a crop of the, of the image. So since we are going to provide right ascension and, um, and declination coordinates, we have to specify here that the mode is in wall coordinate system. And now we have to provide the center. And I will give this center, which is center in one particular galaxy, comma, this is the right ascension, comma, the declination 27.7853. And now we specify the width, the size of the image. So width, we say we want 20 arc seconds. So we have to divide this by three 
1,600, which is how many arc seconds are in one degree, because here we are specifying the coordinates in degrees. And now we can give an output name. So dash dash output, and for example, crop. If we run this, you will see that just in less than 0 0.1 second, it has computed the crop from the original image. So now let's have a look. This is really, really fast, as you can see. And this is the result that uh, I am obtaining. So a smaller image <clears throat> that I was able to construct just directly from, from the command line. Okay, as you can see here, we can have a look now with AST fits at this image just to, sorry, crop just to check uh, that again, we have two different extensions. The first one, the first one just with the uh, metadata and then the size. So the dimension of the second extension and the data type. So now let's do more complicated things. So let's open again the same image just to show you how we can obtain a more complicated uh, crop regions because a square one was uh, really easy to do. So here again, Let's uh, make, let's change uh, the scale. So for example, imagine that I would like to crop a very strange shape of this image. So go to region, shape, and now we are going to change the shape to polygon, okay? And now we are going to define here a very strange uh, polygon on the image. For example, you made your, your this, the shape of the polygon as you want, okay? So for example, something, really strange, which in principle makes no sense, but this is just to show an example, okay? So now that you have defined this, uh, this uh, very strange polygon, you just have to go to region, save as a DS9, as a DS9 region, okay? I also put here also, I always put here degrees, okay? I save this, close, remember the shape, which is really strange, and now you just have to specify this uh, very strange region with the option dash dash polygon and then DS9, DS9 region. And let's put uh, a good name. So for example, dash output uh, polygon fits. Uh -huh. What's happening here? I'm having here the bit the AST bit, so AST cropped, the original image, sorry, I was specifying the already cropped one. So just very briefly, AST crop, the image that we want to crop, so the original image, then the option polygon with the regions, and then the output name. So if I execute this, you will see that uh, in this case, polygon, we have the, the output image with uh, that region that we have previously defined. Okay, so very strange, but this is just to show that we can make very complicated things with this, uh, with this problem. And another very interesting feature is that it preserves by default the world coordinate system. So it doesn't matter on which region of the sky you make the crop, that it is gonna compute the necessary new information about the astrometry of the, of the image. Okay, that's good. Now let's continue with, uh, with another program, which is uh, Neuschiesel. So Neuschiesel was presented, uh, the name is this one, so AST Neuschiesel, as you can see here. So it was presented in, uh, in ADAS 2015 in Sydney, but that time this was at the, the very first uh, moment in which Mohammed presented uh, to the public. And since then it has evolved a lot. And now we are going to see how we can use this program for making the detection of the signal of uh, our astronomical images. So again, let's specify here the, um, the input image that uh, we are going to use. And now let's give a good uh, output name. So for example, chisel.fits. And just uh, let it run. As you can see here, it is using the 16 CPU cores that I have in my laptop. Now let's have a look uh, 
at the output that the, it has computed. So DS9, in this case, I am gonna have a look at all of the different extensions. So I will type here multi-extension cube, and then the my chisel output. It's chisel output, press enter. And now we will see the different extensions that my chisel has computed. Okay, so the first one, let me change uh, the scale once again. So the original one, sorry, the first extension is the same than the original one once Neuchisel has subtracted a sky background model that it computes uh, internally. Okay, so this is the very first extension that we have. The second one is the detections that it has computed. So this is a binary image in which all of the pixels that are white correspond to ones. And that means that here we have, uh, we have signal and then the zeros which correspond to the black pixels, they are sky background. So if I change in between the original image and the, and the mask, the, 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 the detection image, you will see that all of the different signal, all of the object has been detected as signal. And then the third extension is the, the sky background model that Manchester computes by default, maybe changing the color, you will see it better. And then the last extension is the sky standard deviation, okay? So it automatically compute uh, this uh, from the original image without uh, any assumption on the shape of the detected region and so on. So this is uh, non-parametric. And now we can have a look at the, at the files uh, with AST fits once again, nice chisel.fits. And this is actually what we were having a look uh, with DS9. The first extension is just the information that uh, the parameters that my chisel has uh, had used for, uh, for obtaining this uh, detection image, okay? Okay, now let's move to the next program, which is uh, AST Arithmetic, AST Arithmetic, which is a program with the goal of uh, making calculations, um, the manipulation of astronomical images. So the first thing that I want to note here is that it, it uses the reverse Polish notation. So that means that, for example, if you want to multiply two by three, you cannot specify like this, the, the, the order of the operands like this, but you have to do two, three, and then the operator, which is the multiplication, okay? And then, and then it is gonna give to you the, the result. So two by three, it, uh, it is six. So then we have many different operators. So for example, here we could take, uh, for example, the square root of six, and it will give to you this number, and then for example, if you don't want to have uh, this information, so this uh, additional information, you just have to run in quiet mode. This is also common for all of the GNU Astro program, this option. And in this case, it's gonna show you only the, the number that you are asking for. Okay, this is very simple, but once again, we can make very powerful things with this program. So for example, the sum of uh, two different images. To keep the thing easy, just uh, let's do it, AST arithmetic. Now let's specify one image. We have to specify also that we want to sum the extension number one of this image and then the other image. Download, for example, the other filter, the extension number one. And now the operator that we that we want to use for making the, the operation. So we want to sum these two images. So to specify here uh, plus. Okay. And now let's give an output name and just press enter, and it is going to compute the sum of the two different images that we are specifying here as an input. Just let's have a look very fast here to the to the, to the sum image. Of course, this is just uh, this is just uh, summing two different inches, which is uh, easy to do. But uh, in the same common line, you can you can sum thousands or hundreds of images, and it will be done in parallel, just with uh, one single common line in the terminal. Okay, so this is the the result. This is the sum of the two different images. 
and you you can use uh, many other operators there is not only sum or median or something like this but uh, we have many many of them just to have a look of, at uh, some of them you can go to the book into the website uh, of uh, the nuestro to to check all of the different options that we have but you can also have a look uh, without uh, going out of the terminal. So just type here info arithmetic, which is the program that we are using. And then for example, arithmetic oper operators. <coughs> operators. And here you will see a very nice explanation on all of the different things that you have to take into account. And then all of the different operators that we have. So for example, we have trigonometric and hyperbolic operators, the statistical units conversion, filtering operators, stacking operators, and so on. So you have many, many of them. So for example, if you would like to stack many different images, you could stack all of them using the mean, the median value, sigma clipping, so rejecting outliers values, median, standard deviation, uh, and so on. So this is really powerful, and you just have to type uh, the command into the into the terminal. Now let's uh, let's go and use uh, arithmetic for making something more complicated. So for example, we are going to use the detected uh, image of my chisel. So once again, let's have a look at this uh, uh, of the different extensions that we have in this output. As you can see here, we have the detected uh, extension. And now the thing that we want to do is to mask all of the pixels in the original image that correspond to the signal in the detected image, okay? So we can do this with AST arithmetic. So we have to specify the, the images that we are going to use. So nice chisel, the extension number one, this is gonna be the, the data that we want to, to mask and then specify the second extension, which is the mask that we are going to use. Okay, and now the thing, the operation that we want to, to make. So this, since this is a binary image consisting in one and zeros, we can just say here, we have, we want not a number values where where the second image is equal to one, okay? And then we just have to give an output name again. So let's call this only sky, for example. And here you are. Really fast, we have computed the, the mask of this image. Let's have a look. Only mask and you will see what's happening. Here you are. The original image has been so all of the pixels that were considered to have signal in the original image has been set to not a number values, as you can see here. And the rest, so you can see the values pixel here. And then the rest of the pixels remains at, as uh, they were at the, very, at the very beginning, okay? So that can be done with arithmetic. We can do exactly the same, but the other way around. So putting here not, this is another operator. In this case, we are going to make uh, the detection, the, the mask of the, of the sky background and only those pixels that uh, were having signal will be remain untouched. So for example, only detections. And here you are, just have a look, only detections. And this is, let's say the complementary operation to the, to the first one. So here you can see that all of the pixels, let's change the scale again, that all of the pixels that correspond to the sky background that were computed by noise chisel, now they become not a number with the operation that we have uh, just uh, specified. And now here we have the remaining objects without not a, uh, not a number values, okay? So you can make even more complicated things as you will see later, but now let's move to, to another program. The next one, which is a segment. So once uh, Neu Chisel has computed the, the, the detection of the signal from our astronomical images, we can break that signal into different parts. So we are going to use here AST segment for making the segmentation of the, 
of the signal. So let's use this uh, using as an input uh, the output of my chisel. So my chisel has been has detected the detection the, the pixel that has a signal. So now we have to specify AST segment noise chisel and that's it. Let's give an as an output a good name. So segment dot fits and let it run. So it's uh, it is also really fast and let me put fits just in case something happened. And now we can have a look again again with the DS9 multi extension cube and then the segment image. And then you will see that now we have different extensions for the different clamps and uh, objects that segment has, uh, has computed. So let's uh, change the scale. This is the original image, as you can see here. Yeah, and now if I go to the next extension, you will see that now the signal has been segmented into different clamps. Okay, so this is one object, as you can see here. And then it has been broken into different clamps, different group of pixels that correspond to one uh, structures. So if I change in between the original and the clamps, uh, uh, clamps extension, you will see that all of the structures correspond to the to the clamps extension. And now <clears throat> uh, we also have another extension which correspond to the to the to the objects. So let me change the color bar. As you can see here, each different group of clamps belong to one given object. So this is one particular object and within this object, we have different clamps, as you can see here, okay? So now let's do the next uh, experiment. Imagine, for example, that you would like to study the outer part of this, uh, of this uh, galaxy. Okay, so once you are able to detect the object far away, okay, using using uh, noise chisel, and now that you have break this into different objects from this one to this one, and then also you are able to uh, to segment the different parts of the same object into different clamps. Okay, imagine that you would like to study the outer part of the galaxy, the low surface brightness part of this galaxy. So you could make a combination of this max, of this uh, mask, the clamps uh, mask, and the object mask. And for that particular experiment, remember this value. So the value that you can see here for this object, 1,206. One and now let's use arithmetic for make more complicated things. So we are going to mask all of the objects and all of the clamps corresponding to this object while we study the outer part of, uh, of this galaxy. So let's just do it uh, step by step. Remember that uh, just in case you have uh, any problem or any doubt, uh, Mohamed Klagi is in the Discord channel. So it can, uh, he can solve uh, any kind of problem you may have. So let's uh, use again as the arith arithmetic. Okay, and now let's use a very nice uh, feature of arithmetic. So let's uh, specify, um, let me remove uh, this one. Okay, As arithmetic segment. Let me before that uh, show the different extension, just to have it in mind. So here we have the different extension that we have. And now let's go with arithmetic, so AST. Arithmetic, the segmentation, extension number one. This is the input image. And we are going to call this data set as data. So this is a feature here that we can use, which is set dash data. Okay, so now inside arithmetic data is the, the extension number one data. Okay, so let's do exactly the same, but for the extension number two, which are the clamps. Let's call this clamps, okay? And do exactly the same with extension number three, which is, uh, which correspond to the objects. So set objects, okay? And now let's do the operation. We want to multiply the extension number one, which is, sorry, the extension number two, which are the clamps 
by the extension number three, which are the objects. So you just have to type here clamps, objects, and then X. Remember the reverse Polish notation? You have to put before the operands and then at the end, the operators. Now we want to call this, for example, combine. Okay, so set dash combine. Okay, so this is the in, in combine. We are keeping the result of multiplying these two extensions. And now let's uh, mask on the original image those pixels that are not equal to a given value, which correspond to the to the value of the object that they saved before. So data. We are going to use the combine mask. Okay, and now we say minus minus uh, one thousand two hundred and six, which is the value that we don't want to mask. So we say not equal and then put none values where this condition is uh, is true, okay? And then we just have to give an, a good output, uh, output name. So for example, mask.fits and then execute the, that line. And you will see that really fast. So this is almost 0. Point uh, 0 0.2 seconds, it has computed all of this operation and it has given to you the output image. So let's have a look um, using DS9, so mask, and you will see what is the result of this operation. So as you can see here, we have used uh, the different mask, the clamps and the object in order to only have the very low surface brightness features around this kind of clamps for this particular object. And all of these have been done in one single line into the command line. So you can let your in, let your, uh, this is just to let you know that you can make many, many, many powerful things just using these, uh, these sets of uh, programs from the new Astro. Now that we know how to use uh, arithmetic and that we can do many things, let's uh, move to the to another program, which is AST Make Catalog. AST Make Catalog. This program was presented in ADAS 2016 in Trieste by Mohamed Aglagi. And now I am going to explain how to use that program, this program, for obtaining astronomical catalogs, astronomical tables uh, from our images. So once we have constructed, uh, once we have uh, detected the signal and we have break the signal into different objects, we are able to make measurements over that, uh, that images. So for AST make catalog, you just, you just have to specify the segmentation image that came from the program AST segment and now just specify the different measurements that you want to obtain for your catalog. So for example, let's specify here the labels, the IDS of the objects, the right ascension, the declination, so the coordinates. Let's put also the magnitude, the signal to noise, signal to noise, the axis ratio, Okay, and then in order to be able to have a good uh, magnitude values, we have to specify a zero point. So for example, zero point equal to, for this particular image, it is 2594. And then let's also ask for a clamps cut, not only for an object catalog, but also for a clamps cut. Okay, and now let's give a good uh, output name. So for example, catalog that fits. And that's it, really fast. Again, it has computed the catalog. And now we can have a look with AST feeds at the catalog that we are obtaining. And as you can see here, inside of this uh, file, the catalog that we have uh, previously obtained, we have two different catalogs, one for the objects and the other one for clamps, okay? So now, for example, if you would like to obtain the catalog the catalogs in plain text format, you just have to specify here the extension txt. And in that case, uh, it will compute two different catalogs, so two different files, one for objects, as you can see here, and the other one for 
uh, for plants. Now we can have a look at the at the catalogs itself. Catalog, uh, for, for example, for the objects. And you will see that here we have different columns that are the ones that we have uh, requested. So let's remove uh, the TXT files because uh, we are going to work with the with the fits uh, with the fits files. So now that we have constructed uh, one catalog, we are able to go to the next uh, program, which is AST table, AST table. And this program is aiming to manipulate in astronomical data, astronomical tables, sorry. So here you just have to type AST table catalog, and then it, it will print on the command line, the catalog, the measurements, so the actually the data of the catalog. So if you want to obtain, for example, only some data of this catalog, the metadata, you just have to specify here dash dash info or dash da, sorry, dash i in the short option. And it is gonna print on the command line how many different objects do you have in your catalog and the different columns measurements that you obtain with this particular catalog. Now imagine that you have a very huge, very large uh, catalog and you only want to, uh, to use some of the columns. So you can do that with the option column equal to, for example, white ascension. You can specify, of course, another one, column uh, equal deck to obtain the right ascension and declination. And actually you can do this much uh, shorter, just uh, putting a command in between the different names of the columns that you want to obtain. And even shorter with the option that dash uh, C and the name of the columns, okay? Of course, you can also use uh, the number of the columns so the position of the columns is then instead of the name, so column number one, number two, and number three, and it is gonna print on the command line the columns that you have specified. Okay, and now imagine, for example, that you want to keep these columns as another table, just because uh, the original one was uh, very large. So you just have to specify here the output name and say, for example, sub, catalog that fits okay and it is gonna save all of this into into a new catalog so ast table sub catalog just to have a look and you will see that now this is the result of the of the previous operation if you want to for example have a look at the at some objects that are within a given range of magnitude. So for example, let's uh, print everything here. And now imagine, for example, that you only want to have in your sample only the objects that are within a given range of magnitude. So you can, you can do that by specifying here with the option range. So range equal to, to the column name, so magnitude and then comma, the first value, so for example, 26.99, and then the other value, the, the, the other extreme of the range, so 27.0, and it is gonna print on the command line only do those objects that, uh, that, uh, that uh, for, for the condition that the, this is true, in, in, that are in this range of magnitude. Again, you can do exactly the same, but adding another condition, so for example, I want all of the objects that are in a range of axis ratio in between, for example, 0 .0 0 0.6 and one. And then it is gonna print on the command line only those objects that, uh, that, are, that are true for these two different conditions. And now imagine, for example, that you would like to, to sort this sample by the signal to noise ratio column. So you, you just have to use the option dash dash sort and then the column name. So signal to noise. And it is gonna print in order. So this is the very first one. So the smaller signal to noise ratio value. And this is the largest one. But of course, uh, falls within these two different range of, uh, of magnitude and axis ratio. 
If, uh, for example, you would like to count the number of objects that you have in this, uh, in this uh, sample, you just have to type this to the program WC and count the number of lines. So in total, we have eight uh, different objects within our catalog that uh, with this range of, uh, with this criteria. And now moving to into another feature, which is the arithmetic column with the AST table. So once we are able to sort, to manipulate, to filter our, our data, imagine for example, that we would like to obtain the magnitude column, but uh, in millimagnitude. So we, we want to, to transform the magnitude column to millimagnitude, okay? So, we can do this directly with uh, AST table. So let's put, for example, the column here, magnitude. Okay, this is gonna print the original magnitude column. And now we want to operate this column. So we just have to type here C and then quotes, sorry, in small, single quotes. And now we are going to specify here arith because we want to make some operations and then the column that we want to operate magnitude, and then we want to multiply this magnitude column by 0 0.001, and then the operator. And it is gonna give to you, it is gonna give to you the, the, the result. So once we have uh, multiplied the original column by 0 0.001. Of course, this is very simple. We have, again, many different operators. So let's make another one more complicated. So imagine, for example, that here we want to transform the right ascension and the declination of this uh, catalog into pixels position of one particular inch. Okay, so we can just specify here this operation. We want to make the following operation: right ascension, declination, and now we want we are going to transform the WCS to image coordinate. Okay. If you just uh, pre press enter here, it is gonna, sorry, I'm missing here EMG, and it is gonna complain about not having astrometric information. And this is because you are trying to transform the right ascension and declination, but of course, uh, AST table with this operand, operator needs some uh, WCS information for which we are going to give with this option, WCS file, uh, the original image. So for example, download and this filter. Okay, so now it is gonna use the astrometric information within this image to transform the, the, the position on the sky to pixels position. So press enter and you can see. So for this particular image, the position on the sky that correspond to these uh, coordinates are the pixel in these two different columns. Okay, we have many different operators that you can have a look at the GNU Astro book, but this is just one single example in which you can see the different things that we are able to do. So let's move now to another interesting program, which is AST query. And as you can imagine, this is for making queries to astronomical databases, for example, Gaia, Gaia or BCR. So if you type here AST query Gaia dash dash info, you will see that here we are retrieving all of the data, all of the metadata that belongs to the Gaia databases. So we have here, 134 different tables that we can use directly from uh, in, into the command line. So for example, just to specify a given data set, data set here, we can say we want to obtain the uh, data, re data release number three of Kaya. So let's print the information. And you will see that for that particular data set, we have the columns names, so you can, you can obtain that information uh, from here. Okay, another interesting feature is, for example, to have a look at, uh, at another data set, sorry, databases, for example, this year. And now imagine, for example, that you want to look for some particular keywords. So just to specify here, uh, limit, limit info. 
and I'm going to type here my two surnames. So Infante Science. Okay, and just uh, let's go and look for this for this keyword into the BCR databases. As you can see here, I have a couple of data set that I sent to BCR. Actually, this is the one uh, that correspond to the images that we are using for the tutorial that were reduced, uh, published by, by Alejandro Burlaf in a couple of years ago. The next one is about the low surface brightness of some galaxies. And this one correspond to, to the Sloan Digital Sky Survey paper, uh, PSF paper, sorry. So, but this is just to let you know that you can use this uh, powerful feature for looking into the VCR databases just uh, from the command line. And this is really easy and really fast to use. So now let's go to use uh, some data from Gaia. So we are, we are going to download uh, a catalog. So let's put like here Gaia, the data set number three, so the R3. And now, of course, we don't want to download uh, the entire Gaia catalog, but only those, uh, that part that correspond to our image. So we can say here dash dash overlap, uh, overlap with, and then our image again download the, the image and the filter and now instead of only downloading all the catalog just uh, that part that overlap with our particular image now let's specify the columns that we want to download so for example the source id the right ascension declination and then the photometrical uh, magnitude so photometrical BP mean magnitude. And then let's put a good name. So Gaia dash cat that fits. And that's it. So we have retrieved um, the, the data that correspond to our, to our image from Gaia. And you can see here that uh, it consists in a table with four columns, which are the ones that uh, we have requested here and three, uh, sorry, and six different objects, okay? If we have a look uh, again with AST table, Gaia catalog and the information, you will see that this is actually the case. This is, uh, and this is the raw data, okay? And now let's move to the next program, which is AST match. Now that we have computed our own catalog with AST make a catalog, and we have another external, external catalog from Gaia, we could make the match in between that two different catalogs. And for doing that, we are going to use the next program, which is AST match. Okay, this is a program for making the match of astronomical tables. Um, just uh, let's do it. So give, for example, uh, the first catalog and the extension that we want to use. So the extension number one or the clamps, for example, just to put here the name explicitly. Then we are going to use uh, the right ascension and declination for the matching rows. So right ascension, declination. This is what we are going to use for the first catalog, for our catalog. <clears throat> and then do exactly the same for the Gaia catalog. We are going to use this, the first extension, so HDU2, because this is from the second catalog, number one. And then we are going to use the right ascension. <clears throat> so see, call number two. Again, right ascension and declination. And now we have to specify the aperture in which we want to make the, the, the match. Okay, so aperture equal to one arc seconds. Since we have specifying here the columns in degrees, we have to specify also the aperture in degrees. So divide here by 3600. And then for example, the output will be Gaia match. And that's it. Mm -hmm. So we fix. And that's it. We have obtained the output, which is actually the, the match uh, catalog. So AST 
fit Gaia match uh, fits. And you will see that inside of this uh, file, which is the result that we have obtained, we have two different extensions. One correspond to the object that were present in the, so one correspond to the columns from the first, uh, from the first catalog for the object that are match and the other one for the second catalog. If you would like, for example, to obtain uh, one single extension, one single file for the match uh, result, we can specify this with the next uh, with the next option. You could say here dash dash out uh, columns, so out calls, and then specify um, which calls which column from each catalog do you want. So, for example, for from the from the first one. You just, have, you just has to type here A for the first one. We, I want the right ascension. And also for, from the first one, I want the declination and the magnitude, okay? Magnitude. And then for the second, which correspond to the Gaia one, okay? So I put here B, I want the photometrical magnitude, okay? So BP mean magnitude. Now let's put here, and that's it, because we have already specified the output name here. So just press enter. And now, if we, you have a look again at the output, you will see that the, the output now is only one single extension in which you have the match object from the two different uh, catalogs. Okay, so this is really powerful when, when matching really large uh, astronomical catalogs and it is done in parallel and very efficiently and really fast. Okay, let's now go to the next program, which is um, for obtaining the statistics of, um, of images and astronomical tables. And the name is uh, AST statistics, as you can see here. Now we are going to obtain, for example, the statistics of the noise chisel output. Remember, this image is noise chisel. And just press enter, and it, it is going to compute the basic statistical information of this image. So here you can see that the number of elements, so the number of pixels is this one. It is going to obtain the minimum, the maximum, the medium, the mean, and the standard deviation values. And also it is gonna print on the command line a very nice histogram that is really useful when, for example, you are working on a supercomputing facility and you don't have access to a graphical inter interface uh, for having, for example, having a look at the histogram or any kind of plot. So you don't have to go to, to download your, the data to your local machine and so on. So here we can see that we have some pixels which are very bright. So this is the pixel distribution value. Um, so now we have different options that we can play with. So for example, let's have a look at only those pixels that are below a given value. So less than, for example, 0 0.005. And then statistics is going to compute only the statistics for those pixels that are in the range of, uh, of pixel value that we are specifying. So again, the pixel, the number of pixels is different, the mean, maximum, the mode, the quantile, and so on, they are different. And as you can see here, the distribution is also different. So this corresponds to the pixels that are fainter, so essentially to the sky background pixels. Okay, so now instead of uh, having a look at uh, all of these uh, measurements, imagine that, for example, you would like to obtain only the mean. So you just have to type here mean, and it is gonna print on the command line really fast the mean. And of course, you can do exactly the same, for example, with the median, median, and the standard deviation. And for example, imagine that you would like to compute the skewness of this, uh, of this image. So then you will pipe this into OCK, into OCK just to make this computation. Okay, so in, that's why doing this, we can print the result of computing the skewness. Okay, so 
the skewness is defined as the, as the mean, so the first column, the mean, minus the second column divided by the standard deviation. So this is a measurement of the skewness of this image, as you can see here. Okay, and now, for example, imagine that you would like to compare this with, uh, <clears throat> with the image in which uh, we only have uh, the sky background because the signal were, uh, were masked uh, as uh, I showed before. Okay, so now you can compare the different screeners of these two different images and see that actually they are different. Of course, again, we have many different uh, operators that you can use here. We have also Sigma Clip, just to have a look at all of them. You can use the option help or go to the book into the website to check uh, what are the different options and all of the information related with uh, all of them. So another inter interesting measurements are the ones that correspond to the Sigma clipping values. So for example, to obtain the statistics using the Sigma clipping values, uh, Sigma clipping operator, sorry, so dash dash sig, uh, Sigma clip is gonna compute the Sigma clipping values so let's use, for example, the original image, just to see more iteration with chisel.fits. And it is uh, gonna compute the sigma clipping values for the number, the median, the mean, so the main parameters, right? So you can see that it is computing by default three sigma clipping until it reach a given tolerance. Of course, you can, you can change the three sigma to be another one, like for example, two sigma or five sigma, whatever you want, and also the tolerance, okay? So it computes different, different iteration until it reach the tolerance level. And the final result you can have a look at, uh, at here. So this is done really fast, as you can see, and it is uh, really powerful. And then again, uh, you can use the AST statistics, for example, with, uh, with the catalog, not only on images. So if you provide here the catalog that we were measuring before, you can say S AST statistics catalog and just presenter. And of course, it is gonna complain because we have different columns that you cannot uh, mix together. So you have to specify a given column. So for example, see magnitude, and it is gonna compute. So this is the, the, the line that I have just executed. And it is gonna compute the, the statistical parameters for that particular column. As you can see here, this is the minimum value, the maximum, and the distribution of values as you can see here. Okay. So now let's move to high level features. So now I am going to review for example, another program, which is uh, AST uh, com convert, convert type. And this is designed with the goal of, uh, of converting different data sets. So different for converting data sets into different format uh, files. So for example, let's have a look at the crop image, crop uh, fits. So instead of uh, having a look at the original fits file, with this program, we are going to convert this FITS file into a JPG image. So just to specify the output, crop JPG, and it has done the, the conversion. So right now we can use, uh, for example, AOG to have a look at the crop image. And here you can see that we have this small image in which in the center we have the galaxy. But of course, uh, the appearance of this image is not, uh, it's not so nice. And this is because we have very bright pixels, for example, this one that is in the border of the image. So AST convert by default is trying to represent all, so the entire range of pixel values in a linear scale. And because of the very central part, so the central part of the very bright object, object is uh, a pixel value very high, and, the, and the, the sky background are very, have pixel value very low, it is almost impossible to have a, to have a good image with uh, such a uh, huge amount of pixel value. So to solve this, we have the possibility of uh, specifying here 
uh, a maximum value for the pixel that you want to represent. So flux high, for example, 0 0.1. And by doing this, of course, we are going to improve a bit the, the image, as you can see here. But the center is going to be completely saturated. So we have some more information. You can, you can have a look at the other part of the images. But of course, the result can be improved a lot. So here we have uh, also many other different options. So for example, instead, instead of uh, keeping this image as JPG, you can just uh, save as uh, APS, which is more, uh, more convenient. For example, when, when obtaining images for papers and publications, so APS, and it is gonna automatically make the necessary conversion for obtaining in the APS form. So let's have a look at the, at the image that we have just created. Yes, oh, really big. Okay. And here you can see that directly it has been converted to APS. We have different options. For example, we can change the color map. Color uh, map. And for example, select the Brevis which is the typical one that uh, Matplotlib used uh, by default, as you can see here. Okay, and we also can compute the PDF, uh, the, the, the image in PDF uh, format. Okay, again, if I change to open this image, you will see that this is in, sorry, it didn't change. Uh, crop PDF. Here. So this is the PDF that the uh, AST crop is uh, generating. So now instead of making this kind of uh, fake color image, let's say, since we have three different images for the same region of the sky, as you can see here, download, we have, we, are, we have been always treating this image, but we have other two. So this is the redder and this is the bluer and this is in the middle, okay? So we can assign each one of these image to one color channel and give all of them to AST Convert to generate a color image, okay? And this is actually what we are going to do. So AST Convert, we have to give uh, the images from redder to bluer, so download uh, this filter, the download the, the other image in the, in the next filter, and the last one, which is which is the, the bluer, okay? Now let's specify the flux range. So dash dash flux uh, low equal to 0 0.0, to not have negative uh, values and flux high, just to keep uh, the, the brighter regions, 0 0.001, for example, and then output color dot uh, jpg. Okay, and it is saying that I have to specify an HDU for all of the images. So in this case, since I am going to use the extension number one for all of them, I can specify a global HDU, so dash G1, and it is gonna make the color image. So AOG, color JPG, and this is the kind of image that uh, we are computing with this image. Of course, it has many different options for, that you can play with in order to improve the results. But in general, we have the problem that we are showing here the pixel value distribution in a linear range. So to solve this, uh, I am developing a script, which is a collection of, uh, let's say, calls to different GNU Astro programs in order to obtain automatically a good parameters, a good set of parameters to represent uh, color images, to create color images. So this script is actually in this direction. I can download, uh, I can download this script. It is not in GNU Astro yet, but we are working to include this script as part of uh, another GNU Astro program as soon as possible. And this is a perfect sample in which you can see that you can use different GNU Astro programs for making the analysis of your astronomical data in, a, in the proper way, using the well-defined blocks of programs that uh, I have just uh, reviewed before. 
So let's give permission to this script that I have just uh, downloaded. And now let's use this instead of the original AST convert. So RGB, and then we are going to use to use this uh, this script on the original images that we were using. <clears throat> so let's modify a bit the parameters. Okay, let's remove this because they are not uh, longer necessary. So again, HDU equal to one. So basically we are doing exactly the same. We are giving the three different images from redder to bluer. Okay, and now we want to specify here, here that the minimum value is equal to zero because we don't want um, negative pixel values. And then specify um, an output name. So for example, color.jpg. And it is gonna make different operations. So arithmetic, as you can see here, arithmetic is being uh, used a lot. And it is able to compute automatically some parameters that you can you can play with for obtaining a good uh, color image. So let's have a look uh, at the image, JPG. And here you can see that it has compute the necessary transformations for obtaining a better color image. So essentially, this can be improved a lot, as you will see. But basically, what it is trying to do is to make uh, the transformation of the pixel distribution using a uh, arcosine hyperbolic function. So all of the details about this transformation uh, was published uh, some time ago by Robert, by Robert Lupton, 2004. So you can have a look at that paper to, to study the details of this algorithm here. I am just trying to implement this to have a good tool for obtaining, for obtaining uh, color images. So let's play a bit with the parameter. As you can see here, this is some of the guess that the program has done. And now I can use another one. So for example, dash dash q, q bright, uh, bright, bright. Sorry, and let's put, for example, 0 0.4538, for example, and then improve the contrast by a factor of, uh, of two. And then let's run this, uh, the same line of code, but just modifying this uh, couple of parameters. And then you will see that now, well, you can see here that the parameters for the original ones were this one, okay? And now we have changed these ones, okay? So basically, if we have a look here, LG color, in, color image, you will see that now the image has improved uh, by a lot, okay? So now we are able to see the inner part of the galaxies and the stars together with the outer part and the sky background in a much better way. So this is just uh, playing a bit with the parameters but in principle, you will be able to play and improve uh, a lot of the parameters that uh, it is possible to use with this, uh, with this kind of scripts. So now I have some minutes in which I can keep going to show um, a couple of things about how to generate uh, some profiles and making the convolution of astronomical images. So let's uh, let's do this once we have uh, we have reviewed this script. For example, we are going to use the AST key prof to obtain uh, astronomical sorry astronomical no, um, functions some some profiles. Okay, so for example, we want to obtain a kernel which is a Moffat a function equal to a Moffat so kernel equal to Moffat and then the parameters of the Moffat. So uh, uh, an alpha, a beta, so three, 2.8, for example, and then the truncation radius, five, and then specify that you have, and that you want to have an oversample of one. So just one pink pixel, oversample equal to one, and then the output that we are going to call Moffat. Okay, and really fast, it has computed this image. So let's have a look at the image, Moffat. And you can see here that it is actually the shape of a Moffat, okay? In the same way, 
we can specify that we want to obtain, for example, a, a Gaussian function. So for doing this, the Moffat, uh, sorry, the, the Gaussian only have uh, two parameters. So remove the beta and then let's call this, uh, well, you have to specify here ga Gaussian. Gaussian, and then let's call it in a different way. So go Gaussian, and now it's gonna create a Gaussian function in the same way done before, okay? Now we can use this Gaussian or this Moffat function to make the convolution of the original image with, uh, with this kernel. So, and to do that, I am going to explain another program, which is AST uh, Convolve. AST Convolve, okay? So now we have to specify the original image. So download this filter, and then the kernel that we are using. So kernel, kernel, for example, the Gaussian, and the, the space in which uh, the domain in which we want to make the convolution. So in this case, we are going to make the convolution in the spatial domain. So dash dash domain, and then spatial, spatial, and then the output name. So convolve, convolve.fix. So again, we are using the input image and the kernel Gaussian that we have just uh, created with the previous call to AST make profile make the convolution in the spatial domain, and then let's, let's uh, do the convolution. Let's have a look. So we can open the original, the original image just to compare and the convolve with DS9 at the same time, just to see how we can make, uh, we have make uh, the, the, the filter, the smoothing of the image. Okay, just to have a look here, let's match everything just to compare the two different images. So as you can see here, the convolve one has increased the signal to noise, but of course the resolution has, uh, has been decreased. Well, not the resolution of the pixel because the pixel size is essentially the same, but the, uh, actually we have a smooth image, right? So make the convolution with the Gaussian kernel. So this is something that you can do directly from, from the command line. And then just to finish, I would like to show a very nice example on how we can use different uh, other, other tools of GNU Astro for making a catalog, a synthetic uh, catalog, and then make a kind of a simulation of a galaxy with a string. So here we are going to make a catalog. Just uh, let me copy directly this line. Okay, so this is a bit strange at the very beginning. You can ask uh, to Mohammed at the Discord channel, but basically we are putting here some parameters that will be used for for AST make profile for the for for building some uh, some objects. Okay, so in this case for this one, we are encoding here the necessary parameters for creating the PSF. Okay. So this is the PSF. And now we are going to put a galaxy, which is a CERCIC uh, profile with an index equal to one, as you can see here. Okay, at this position and many other parameters. So the position angle and so on. So let's keep this in the same uh, file. And then let's put a string, which is also a ring of pixels that we are simulating. So now that we have created this file, let's have a look. So cut.txt. Uh, this is basically the parameters that we are using for making the simulation. No? Now let's, let's use AST make profile to make uh, the synthetic image. So we can specify here that we, here that we have a, a particular size. So, so let's give the catalog, catalog.txt. Uh, merge size, for example, equal to 600 and 600. The mode uh, is in image. 
image because we are not giving wall coordinate uh, coordinate uh, on the sky. We want to over sample this uh, five times uh, zero point zero point of uh, equal to thirty, for example, and then circum it, which is uh, for the for the stream equal to twenty and then output for example no noise because this is not uh, having noise yet uh, and no convolution uh, no convolve uh, dot fits and it is going to create a uh, this synthetic image okay so let's have a look at this image really fast and you will see the kind of image that we have created Okay, so at the center we have created the galaxy and we have a ring here that correspond to the, to the stream. And this has been computed only using the, the GNU Astro AST make profile with the parameters that we have specified in this file. And now the thing that we are going to do is, uh, well, let's move, uh, let's move the, this file that the, it is the PSF the kernel okay let's move and call it like kernel so this is uh, this could be a bit strange at the very beginning but you have the instruction that i am following uh, into the website and in any case you can ask to ask in the discord channel so there is no problem so now we are going to convolve uh, the the image that we have just created with the with the kernel so let me just copy and paste the line that I am putting here. So again, AST convolve no, the, the original image and the kernel that you uh, that we have just created. Just execute this, and then we are going to warp, which is another program that I don't have time to explain right here, but you have the information. So we are warping this. Okay, we are transforming the pixel scale. So let's uh, do this step. So let's have a look at this image. Um, <clears throat> no noise uh, over sample. Okay. Raul, and just now, a note, um, you have 10 minutes left over. 10 minutes? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Perfect, thank you. So just to have a feeling of, of what I am doing, we have simulated some, let's say some real condition of, uh, of the observation. So we have uh, resampled the image and so on. And now we are going to add, or, uh, we are going to add the noise. So in AST arithmetic, we have uh, that, uh, the possibility of doing that with, uh, with the operator make noise. So with arithmetic, I am giving as an input the image that I have just created. I am going to transform the nine to two counts and then make a Poissonian noise. And then the output, <clears throat> as you can see here, will be somehow a realistic observation of this, uh, of this galaxy. So galaxy, and this is the kind of simulation that you can do, of course, this is very simple, but here you can see, oh, we have simulated a, a galaxy with a stream around this galaxy. And now we can start playing, for example, with no chisel for making the detection or comparing our techniques uh, with another different catalogs. Okay, um, more or less, this is all that I wanted uh, to show. Just to let you know that, uh, of course, we have something that are not uh, programs in JET, so I used the, uh, we have reviewed almost all of the different programs. But then we have some scripts that, as I said before, uh, they are high, higher level uh, scripts. They are actual scripts, as you can see here. So let's let's have a look. For example, if you type here which uh, AST script uh, radial profile, this is a script for making the radial profile of astronomical images uh, given a particular um, position on the sky. So if we have a look actually at the script, so it installed, as you can see here in this direction, in the Conda environment, and this is actually a shell script. And you can see that uh, we have developed this 
using many different uh, GNU-Astro programs. So here you will see that, for example, for computing the center, we are using uh, AST table with the WCS uh, parameters that we have previously used. For example, here for uh, obtaining some parameters, we are using AST feeds, then AST statistics for making the computer, uh, the calculation of some parameters and so on. So this is uh, actually an example on how you can use uh, the different GNUASTRO programs to put all of them together into one single script for making the analysis that you want to, to obtain. Okay, and now just to finish, um, let me let me say to you, okay, this is the notes that I have been following. You have all of them into, into the, the Discord channel in the into the webpage. And just to finish, let me have a look at the GNUASTRO book. Just to say to you that even though we have used in this tutorial uh, the Conda installation, you will see that the GNU Astro has a very few dependencies. So let me make uh, this window a bit bigger. So here you have all of the different formats in which you can have a look at the documentation in HTML directly on the website. So you have here the index, the table of contents, but of course, you also have the PDF, uh, the already compiled PDF in which you can have a look here. So this is a, um, the PDF. As you can see here, we have uh, different sections. We have a very wonderful section in which you can start uh, playing with nice tutorial for, for from the very beginning. Okay. And then about the installation, you will see the dependency that we have to install uh, GNUASTRO from scratch are just three. The first one is the GNU Scientific Library, CFITSAIO, and then the GNU, uh, sorry, the WCS uh, library that you can see here. All of them are explained here in detail. And actually you can see here that you have the different steps that you need to run on the command line for installing all of them. And of course, also uh, GNUASTRO itself uh, from scratch. So since it has a very few dependencies, it is possible that many different uh, Linux distributions have already compiled uh, GNU Astra. You can see here uh, the list of all of the different GNU uh, Linux distribution that has already compiled GNU Astro. So for example, compared with AstroPy, and because AstroPy have many different dependencies, some of the Linux distribution are not able to compile them um, as easy as uh, GNU Astro, right? By, you will see that the list is uh, much smaller. And actually some of them, some of the distribution has already the latest version of GNU Astro, as you can see here. And then just uh, let me finish uh, showing that, uh, of course, if you find the GNU Astro is useful for your particular research, uh, you can use the feature site. So for example, imagine that you are using noise chisel, I use the noise chisel. You have the option dash dash uh, site, sorry, site, to have a look at uh, which paper, which documents do you have to cite in order to acknowledge, for example, this particular program, which is uh, GNU Astro. So I will finish here. I think we have time for a couple of questions. So thank you very much to, to all of you to attend, for attending to this uh, tutorial. I hope uh, you have enjoyed. Thank you very much. Raul and Mohamed, thank you so much for this uh, great talk. Um, I think we can give them a round of applause here. Thank you. I don't know if uh, the uh, um, uh, participants here um, in attendance have uh, been following this call, but that's been very active. Um, is there any questions um, from the uh, group here in person that uh, uh, that we can ask? Uh, well, um, we can use the microphone here if you have any questions. We, mm -hmm. we can come up, yeah, sure.
So I think somebody is talking, but I cannot hear. Here. Some of you are hearing something? Uh, no, no, we don't hear anything. So Muhammad, please feel free to ask, uh, answer the question if you think. Uh, no, no, I, I see in the video that uh, ah, okay, okay. someone is talking, but I don't hear anything. Okay. Mm, okay. And now? Oh, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks. So I was particularly interested in the feature that creates the RGB images. Is it possible with new astral to then overlay contours of another image on top of that RGB image and then export it as a PDF or PNG or whatever? You know how you can do that with Apple Pie with six figure? Is that something that's possible with new astral? So you mean, for example, make some annotation? So like uh, putting arrows or some text within the image? Yeah, some annotations or whatever it is you want to do and then export it. Well, actually, with the, with the programs that we have, I think it is not possible. Correct me if I am wrong, Mohammed, but uh, it, so is, it, it is, it can be. Yes, yes. Go on, go on. No, no, go on. So uh, the thing is that, uh, Raul, I'll send you this link uh, of this paper in the chat uh, mm -hmm. that you can show. Uh, so this is a trick, actually. It's not uh, that, that we, we have right now. Do you have the, do you have the chat in the Zoom? Yes. Um, that what I've done was to manually play with the color uh, channels to add the contours that I wanted. And you see, it works nicely. Um, but yes, yeah, so Raul, if you can show it. No, it's in the chat of Zoom. Sorry, I should have put it in. Ah, in the chat of uh, Zoom, let me... How can I open the chat of Zoom? So I'll, maybe I can put it on Discord. Yes, maybe, yes. I know this is in, Gnu uh, in the Gnu yeah, Astro yeah, book. That, so I put it on Gnu Astro, yes, yes. No, no, this is in, the, in one of the papers that announced version 10. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so if you go to figure two, uh, we have a case, uh, yeah, go down. Uh, you have a second figure and uh, no, more, more, one more, <laughs> the third one, <laughs> sorry, bad memory. Uh, here you go. So you see, um, um, what I've done was that in each a color channel, like in this scenario, I wanted to show the surface brightness essentially uh, levels around the detection of this galaxy. Um, uh, so you see, I just effectively put the sex tractor edges on the red channel, the noise chisel edges on the blue channel, and then <laughs> like this noise chisel optimized on the green channel. And uh, it worked really nicely to show, to show these features in a per pixel base to show vector-based uh, contours, if you want a vector. So this, this goes into the pixels of the color image. Um, but uh, to show vectors, what I do is to um, uh, just, uh, for example, I take the EPS uh, output and then I just draw contours uh, with, uh, with PGF plots in, uh, in LaTeX, for example right now, but that, that is really a feature we plan to add. And in fact, I think we have a task for it. Uh, thank you, thank you for mentioning it. With your question, its priority will go up. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, it would be a great feature to have. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, is there any other questions from the floor? Okay. Um, Raul, Mohamed, thank you so much. Um, I think, uh, the discussion may continue in, inside the channel on Discord, and uh, so you guys feel free to um, to add any questions to, um, that you may still um, come thank up with so in the next few minutes. Thank you so much for organizing it. Yeah, thank you very much to, to all of you. We are more than happy about answering all of your questions that you may have. Thank you. All right, um, the next session will start in, I think, about half an hour uh, from now. So, yeah, um, and that will be the buff in this stream over here. Thank you so much. Hour and a half, okay. Thank you so much. <laughs>